for more on all things uh, hockey and sports, we welcome in our NHL Network insider, Elliot Friedman. Uh, Elliot, we will get to the trade deadline stuff, and it certainly has been a busy day for you. But uh, any more insight, details as to uh, the story we were just talking about, the postponement tonight between the Blues and the Wild and how the league and, and the ownership group there in Minnesota maybe came to this decision? Well, I, I just think it's pretty obvious that the city is considering uh, a curfew right now. Uh, and, you know, all of these teams recognize that, uh, as Bruce just said, it's bigger than sports. And you take a look at it, it affects the baseball team, it affects the basketball team, it affects the hockey team. There are just times when sports isn't the priority, and this is one of them. And I don't think anybody's surprised nobody's going to be playing tonight. All right, well said by you. Uh, not an easy segue here, but we will get back to the topic of the trade deadline. Um, in your past trade deadlines, at what point can we kind of breathe a sigh of relief? Because, you know, the 3 p.m. Eastern trade deadline, and then we've learned historically that trades come out. We saw the Mantha trade come out after 3 p.m. At what point do things start to settle down here? Probably tomorrow morning, just to make sure that the, the queue isn't really that long. No, I think we're getting closer to it now. Um, uh, I think you're we're basically at a point. I, I don't know of anything that's still in the queue right now. I just want it. And so I think we're in a situation where I think we're starting to breathe a little bit easier, although I probably won't 100% feel that way yet. Look, I mean, the, the biggest deal of the day, the Verana deal came down after, the Mantha deal came down after 3 o'clock. That happens sometimes. Remember a couple of years ago when Calgary traded for Nicholas Backstrom for Minnesota, I think that one came down at like 5.30 Eastern. So you always have to be careful, but uh, I don't. it doesn't sound like we've got anything major coming still here. Elliot, uh, how surprised were you uh, hearing about that Mantha trade? It seemed like a pretty big one. There was a lot of pieces involved. It was, was it something that was on the radar for you? And uh, what do you make of the deal for both teams? You know, I'd really like to tell you that I'm this great insider, EJ, who saw this one coming, but I'd be lying to you. It, it, so I, one thing I did know, I did know Detroit had basically said, unless your name was Morris Sider or Lucas Raymond or Dylan Larkin, uh, we were willing to talk about just to, uh, about anything. And Mantha was on that list. They were willing to talk about Anthony Mantha. And, you know, at the, at the core of it here to me is a couple of things. Vrana had fallen out of favor with the Capitals, and I think he's a really good young player. And Mantha clearly at times this year had fallen out of favor with the Red Wings. So you've got two young, talented players here who uh, the, both teams were willing to give a change of scenery to. Plus then you've got the situation where Washington needed to get Ponick's contract off the cap. So I think that's kind of where it goes from here. So yes, I was surprised when it happens, but when I thought about it, it made a lot more sense when you take a look at everybody's situation, the three players situation in their two respective franchises. Um, Elliot, I really don't have a lot, but the last time I was on, I left the stage. So I figured I had to ask you a question. And is it windy in Toronto? That's my question to you, because I'm just looking at the hair a little bit and it's all over the place. So I uh, just wanted to know if everything was okay out there. Well, first of all, I got to tell you, I remember when that happened, Bruce, I got off the segment. I said, did I do something to offend this guy? I mean, I know we, I know we worked together. He started the segment on the air and after he was gone, I would just say this, Bruce, we can't get haircuts here right now. So my choice is to let it go like this or have my wife cut it. And I will take option A over option B a hundred times out of a hundred. Sorry, honey. Good, cho <laughs> Good choice by you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Elliot, I'm going to get back to the, the trade deadline. I didn't see the follicle conversation coming. <laughs> but uh, any, any surprises for you today as far as maybe teams that you thought might make a deal that maybe didn't? Uh, well, I mean, aside from the big one, the, the deal at the end, uh, I would just say that I think the, the I was surprised Winnipeg maybe didn't do a bit more. I think they're a really good team. They have a chance, I think, in the North Division. I was surprised they didn't do uh, a little bit more. That one kind of surprised me a bit. Um, I would say among the teams in the States, I, I was maybe surprised. I, I think Vegas, I wouldn't say I'm not surprised it, it didn't happen. But I think Vegas really wanted to see if it could take a big swing. They were in on Hall. They were trying to see if they could get Getzlaff to go there. And I think there were some conversations about that possibility. I would say that I just think the way that Vegas thinks, they try to go after every big player they can. I'm, I'm sure they're sitting themselves and saying, man, we would have liked to have taken a bit of a bigger swing here.
Elliot, let me ask you about Taylor Hall because there's been a lot of discussion on Twitter and among fan bases and people aren't happy because, you know, in mm -hmm. Buffalo they expected to get more. In other places, you know, the circumstances are, are different for, you know, as you know, doing this for a long time, as, as I do. I mean, it's every circumstance is different and the market is different for every player for a number of different reasons. But give me your thoughts on the Taylor Hall deal and the return for the Buffalo Sabres. Well, first of all, I, you know, I can't believe there wasn't rational discourse on Twitter, uh, <laughs> EJ, because that's where all rational discourse that's true. goes. That's true. Um, you know, look, like Taylor Hall said a lot of things today that I suspected were true. Number one, he wants to be a Boston Bruin. Number two, he wants to be a Boston Bruin uh, after this season. Uh, number three, that he had tried to sign there last year. And the reason he didn't was because the Bruins told him they would have to move some other things. Uh, before they could uh, bring him in. And I think he just felt he didn't want to wait. All s he didn't want to wait. He wanted to know where he was playing, and that's why he took Buffalo when Boston wasn't ready. And number three, he flexed his no-move clause a bit. Um, uh, you know, I, I think that he, 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 he flexed his no-move clause a bit to go to Boston. And, you know, I, I have to say that I think that there were other teams that were in on him. Like I said, Vegas, I think, was in on him. I think St. Louis looked at it. I think the Islanders looked at it. And I think at the end of the day, his choice was to try his luck with the Boston Bruins. And, you know, Kevin Adams said today, you know, the Bruins, they had leverage. And they used their leverage, too. And I think Adams tried to make the best deal he could. But I also think that, you know, he had a situation where Hall was saying, I wanted to be here. And that affected the situation, the deal that Adams could make. Elliot, you talk about a, a player in Taylor Hall kind of waiting, and, and players in Vancouver have been waiting to get back on the ice, and we know the dire situation that's been going on up there in uh, British Columbia right now with, with their COVID-19 situation. Scheduled to be back uh, on the ice and, and playing again on Friday. How fluid is that situation right now? Well, I, I think one of the things that I was kind of wondering most about, Jameson, was would any player decline to play? And as, uh, as I had heard... Uh, coming out of the weekend that hadn't happened. Um, I think that's one thing we were all kind of wondering. I think there were some players who were concerned about leaving their families. I think there were some players who, you know, weren't crazy about the idea of being traded. Like Tanner Pearson, his extension talks picked up during this. And I, I believe he was one guy who said, I'm not crazy about the idea of leaving my family in the middle of this. And his extension talks went from pretty cold to getting done in a very short period. So, you know, I, I think that um, I think it's affected a lot of people a lot of different ways. I think there are players on that team who are really looking forward to getting back on the ice and having the normalcy there. <laughs> Excuse me. That's going to be a tough schedule to finish up, though, uh, at the end of the year, Jameson. All right. A lot of games in a little amount of time. Elliot, we appreciate the insight, especially on a uh, very busy day like today. Great work up there. And uh, if anything breaks, uh, we're coming right back to you. So stand by. <laughs> All right. Take care, James. All right. We'll Shoot take a time out. Good to chat with you, EJ Bruce. See you guys later.